Hello, BirdBot community. Uh, I just want to give you an update on the machine learning software that we're developing for BirdBot. There's been some pretty significant updates the past week. We've connected various APIs to capture data, um, primarily lo location data, species data, um, time data, uh, all sorts of data. Uh, that would be very, very helpful to you know research and conser conservation institutions. Um, this data going forward uh, potentially could revolutionize conservation and um, you know wildlife monitoring as we know it because it has the potential to generate a ton of data um, that human resources just couldn't do. Uh, this camera has been running you know for the past uh, almost a year now uh, and we've aggregated hundreds upon hundreds of videos and now we're starting to develop really, really cool tools around um, utilizing that data to actually improve the machine learning model, make other models, um, and make tools that we can develop into other use cases, uh, like this heads-up display and um, the API infrastructure that we're building and the databases that we're building. So uh, this update is, you know, pretty, pretty substantial. It's pretty cool. Uh, and I'll start to go through uh, the BirdBot stream. So some of you probably haven't seen a BirdBot stream before. Um, if you look in the top, uh, well, there's a bird on the screen and that's a Stellar's J. And we can see that uh, it froze for a slight second. And uh, that freezing is not a bug. It is a coding uh, feature, which I'll explain later. Um, but yeah, uh, since a Stellar's J just appeared on the screen, uh, I'll start in the bottom right hand corner, uh, which is the last seen species. The last seen species was a Stellar's J and we just saw it at 10.33.03. Um, so about, you know, 30 seconds ago, uh, which is really, really cool. So down in the bottom right hand corner is where you can always observe uh, what species was seen last. Um, this is if you have the heads up display on, on your camera, but I assume uh, most people will enjoy the heads up display. So um this is just a widget that tells you the last time that a bird was on the screen which uh it did its job uh in the bottom left hand corner you have an fps so a frames per second counter currently the frame frames per second is sitting at around you know 27 to 28 fps which is pretty good uh movie quality is around 30 fps to 60 fps if you're playing like high high quality games um so we hope to get it around you know 30 fps consistently uh in the top Right, left hand corner uh, you'll see the today's seen species so these are all the species that were seen today um, this list resets at 5 30 every day so i'm pretty confident that all these species are you know species that have been seen today you can see that there's pine siskin ruby crown kinglets sparrows you know warblers the northern flickers um, what we saw was a jay and then a northern flicker is a woodpecker um, and chickadees are really, really, really small birds. So um, you can see that there's a pretty diverse array of uh, species that come to this bird feeder. Um, and it kind of just depends on where you live. But as we expand, you know, our global camera network bigger and bigger, uh, this species array will be much different for you or, you know, other cameras around the world. Um, you know, if you set up a camera in Europe, it's likely that you'll see European starlings. We also have those in the United States, but... Um, I think you guys just call them, you know, general starlings or just starlings, but uh, we, we call them European starlings. So it'll be really cool to see as, um, you know, cameras go up across the globe, what types of species we need to integrate into the machine learning model and uh, what types of data we start to collect coming back to our, you know, database. Um, and the last little thing that I want to show you or a couple of things that I want to highlight on this stream is in the top right hand corner, uh, there is a birds earned. So... And in a current time, also there's music, um, which I don't know if the music's playing right now. Uh, it looks like it is, but it's just really, really low. So um, we got birds earned. Uh, every bird that's seen by the camera is worth five birds. So we've earned 385 birds today. So like we've probably seen close to a hundred birds. Yeah, I mean, that's close to a hundred birds. It's like around 80 birds right now. Um, and we've seen, it's currently four to 2000, 22 uh, at 10 36 and if you look down at the bottom we saw a bird about three minutes ago so now that we've gone into 
uh, the how BirdBot's running, and it's running on Twitch. It runs on Twitch almost every day. Um, so if you ever want to like come check out BirdBot on your own and look at the software and watch it run, maybe watch a couple birds come in. Um, I definitely advise you to you know subscribe to the Twitch channel or you know just come watch it for you know a little while, and it's highly likely that you'll see a bird. So uh, cool on that. So this is the BirdBot stream. And now I'll move on to what happens when a bird is actually detected on the screen. So we saw when the Stellar J came on the screen, there was a little tiny uh, pause. It's about a half second to a second pause. And that what that pause does is it takes that frame in that second and it, it converts it to a image. Uh, and then it says that sends that image to our backend database. So now I, I'll uh, show you guys what types of data we're starting to collect um, with the BirdBot machine learning software. So here is just our basic Excel database. Um, it's going to get upgraded to, you know, an SQL database or something, you know, more robust in the future. But, you know, for now, Excel works totally fine. Um, you can see that we're capturing, you know, the date, the time, the birds earned, the Algorand wallet address that's connected to this camera. Um, this is my, I've just named it Tyler desktop cam. It's actually Tyler balcony cam, so I got to rename that, but it doesn't really matter. Um, you can see the bird species that triggered the capture. And then you can see the bird photo name. So uh, this is the name that's identified with the bird photo that was captured at this point in time. Um, so yeah, if you're, I don't know, if someone in the future is trying to mess with the API, uh, good luck. We'll probably be able to find you pretty fast. Um, but yeah, this is kind of the data that we get going in. Um, so like, for example, you know, these pine siskins, uh, let's say that this is like uh, suspicious because a ton of pine siskins came in at one time. You're like, oh, well, maybe like someone's trying to like uh, mess with the camera and they're just trying to submit a ton of pine siskin data. Uh, well, we can go look into that um, so we can be like, were those pine siskins actually on the screen at that point in time? Well, um, the cool thing is that we can actually go do that because we have a photo database now. Um, so like I said, all this text database, uh, it's going to start to expand and aggregate more and more data. We're going to get regional location data as well. Cause you know, location data is exceptionally important. Um, so, you know, once when we combine species, time of day, uh, location data, you know, this species array, potentially duration on screen, which we're also capturing, um, you know, these types of metrics are going to be really important. And then you can even think of like scenarios like um, birds of prey right they come back to their nest we can even start to detect um, what types of prey they're bringing back to their nest so like if they're i don't know hunting gar fish or something or you know like coming back with a specific type of spotted trout it's like well now we know that like spotted trout are exceptionally important to the osprey population or something like that so the types of data that we're going to be acquiring in the future is going to be really, really interesting um, because currently we're focused on, you know, bird feeder species. But as it expands out to other species, we're going to, the types of data we are going to acquire might expand as well. Um, so going back to, you know, the security use case. So like this is a lot of pine siskins coming in at one time. Are all these pine siskins actually real? Well, we can go into our photo database and we can check that. So let's just sort it by name. And it's a little nice because, you know, currently there's only one address that's submitting photos, but uh, we can come down to, you know, the pine siskins and be like, okay, well, let's just take this one, the 1221. So is 1221 good? And if 1221 is good, then, you know, all the other ones are probably good. And yeah, so a pine siskins, pine siskins were definitely on the screen at this point in time. We can flip through this and see if there's any issues. Uh, yeah, there's there's a little bit of an issue right here, right? So like uh, pine siskins at certain angles probably look like ruby crown kinglets, which is, you know, uh, it's learning issues with the machine learning model um, because, you know, humans are really, really good at detecting motion blur, but um, machine learning and, you know, cameras aren't. So um, going into and helping the machine learning, knowing that this scenario uh, causes the machine learning model to not identify a pine siskin properly is exceptionally important. So some people might see this as like a, a mistake or like an error in the software. What I see this as is a learning opportunity for our engineers and our data scientists to address the problems that are occurring in the machine learning. So like pine siskins look like ruby crown kinglets when they're moving really fast and they have motion blur. 
So how we can fix that is just, just that we got to relabel these species, uh, the, the Ruby Crown Kinglet label as a Pine Siskin label because um, this is a Pine Siskin. So the more and more we do that, the more and more scenarios we identify where, you know, uh, bird species are not being identified properly, uh, we can go and help correct those scenarios. So this isn't necessarily a mistake, it's more so a learning opportunity for the machine learning model. And here again, you can see that a pine siskin from behind might look like a ruby crown kinglet, um, which we can also see here. Uh, it looks like a ruby crown. Well, I mean, it doesn't doesn't to me look like a ruby crown kinglet, but I can understand as to the machine learning model as why it might think uh, a pine siskin from behind looks like a ruby crown kinglet. So, but yeah, you know, the bird, anytime that a bird is seen, it gets logged to our Excel database. That uh, data is then sent to our uh, photo database. It's currently just a OneDrive database, um, but we can sort it by, let's just sort it by newer to old, just for fun. And we can see the last two Stellar J's that came in. So there's a Stellar J like putting a seed in its gullet because they got a little pouch right here and they store a ton of seeds in that. Um, and here's another one doing the same exact thing. He's probably taking a peanut. So super cool, super cool. Um, now we have a methodology for not only um, logging the data um, for research and education purposes and conservation purposes, but also we have a methodology and API for aggregating data at scale uh, using these machine learning models. So uh, this portion should not be understated. The ability to aggregate data in real time uh, and labeled data at that uh, is very, very, very important. So uh, happy to give this update. Um, so the last thing I'll touch on is, you know, when a bird does come, it's like, okay, where does this data go? It goes to this Excel spreadsheet. It goes to, you know, the photo database. Um, but we also want to design very, very um, useful and uh, unique graphics and infographics because uh, people have a hard time, you know, connecting all this data to, you know, real world applications or connecting it to the human experience, right? So we need to do a better job as conservationists and wildlife educators and technologists at explaining what we're doing and why it's important and starting to aggregate that data into charts and graphs and interactive tools that people can play with is one of the ways that we can get people more excited about, you know, wildlife conservation and, uh, the data in general. So here's our prototype database um, for, well, it's not a database, it's our prototype dashboard. So this is called the gecko board. Uh, it's it's a way to aggregate a ton of different types of data. Um, you can see that we have our website data up here. An average web session on our website is around one minute and 30 seconds, which is not too bad. Um, here is our BirdBot blog news. So every month we publish, you know, some blogs uh, here's what our BirdBot camera prototype looks like. It's not going to exactly look like this once when it gets to the end phase, but we're really shooting for, you know, this birdhouse type style uh, with kind of like a round features, um, potentially a uh, a speaker on it for, you know, um, animal deterioration uh, use cases. Um, you know, sound hasn't been proven to be a good deterrent for squirrels, but... Uh, for you know birds birds flying into windows for example it has been proven that sound blankets uh, or you know sound barriers do help um mitigate bird collisions so uh having a speaker on the bird bot camera in the future could potentially we could develop some use cases around that here's a current visitor map so we can see that someone's visiting from russia right now so they're just like Looking at the website from Russia, uh, I mean, the most dots on this map I've seen is probably like four or five. So anytime that someone uh, that is not me is visiting the website, they'll, they will appear on here. Eventually in the future, this will become a camera live uh, map. So this will just show where all the cameras are running currently. Um, let's see other statistics so our alpha version of the software has been running for two days we have two two wallets connected to it 12 transactions have been made over the 10 days we've sent out around 10,000 rewards um and we daily my camera sees around 300 bird species well 300 birds a day which is a lot you can see that it's starting to come down a little bit um maybe like 
last week it was just a high influx of birds not totally sure um but now we're starting to average around like 150 i mean 250 birds a day which is cool but this trend data will be very interesting over time to just like personally see how many birds globally you're coming in and then like on from a personal level how many how does your birds fluctuate over time like do you see a huge dip in the birds like when you don't feed the bird feeder like you don't restock the bird seed like i would i would assume so because you know bird seeds like one of the ways to attract birds um so observing and you know looking into why your bird trends trend the way that it do might be uh an interesting thing for some people um, and then the last little thing on the database is the sightings leaderboard. So the species leaderboard, um, this is just, you know, the types of species that have come to the global cameras. Mostly we have a lot of chickadee data, black cap chickadee data, junco data, um, flickers, uh, got a couple of vultures, which is cool because Connor was in the Caribbeans and got us some, you know, uh, data of black vultures, which I think is really cool. Um, but that's that's about it. Um, we, we now have a fully integrated uh, software. So that, that was pretty much my main update I wanted to give was that I, I know there's a lot of moving parts to understand, but um, the main thing is that when a bird appears on the screen, we have a methodology for capturing all of the data, like text data about that bird whether it be location, you know, potentially temperature, air quality, whatever. The moment that a bird appears on the screen, we can capture data. Um, and then not only just the data, we can capture visual data as well. So um, we can capture pictures of the birds, we can capture maybe even audio waveforms of the birds. So that automated data capture system is exceptionally important, um, not just for, you know, the Agram blockchain, uh, and our application that we're developing, but for all sorts of use cases, right? So like this can be like automatic car collision detection that sends, you know, a car crash detection to a database that's read by emergency response, like um, fire detection, same thing, back to, you know, uh, fire departments and stuff like that. Um, so uh, the use cases are pretty interesting um, now that we have this huge infrastructure set up um, Currently, it's starting with bird species and all wildlife species. I'm really passionate about wildlife conservation, so I think our project's probably going to live in the wildlife conservation space for a while. But the infrastructure that we've set up, you know, today uh, or, you know, over the past couple of weeks is really setting up the groundwork for developing all sorts of other machine learning products. So, yeah, that's my big update. I uh, hope you all enjoyed it. Hope you all sticked around. Uh, if you did enjoy it, please, you know, uh, subscribe. There will be more business content and more, you know, machine learning algorand content in the future coming to our BirdBot YouTube. Um, but that's about it. I appreciate, you know, taking the time. Catch you guys next time.